Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah J, and today I am loading my Evolution Hoop Hybrid Frame, and I am loading it for hoop style. So in this particular case, this back roll is stationary. It's not gonna roll. Front rail rolls forward, and we're gonna be using clamps to secure the quilt on all sides. This particular style of frame, when it's in hooping mode, you can quilt any size of quilt. So you could use this method to load a king size quilt onto this frame. So let's get started with this load. And I do this on the wall and I do use the hoop frame leader cloth. You could do this on the wall without the leaders, but I just think that the leaders make it a little bit easier and they reduce the amount of fabric you're going to need to cut for your backing. And that means it's gonna reduce the amount of fabric that you use with every single quilt you load. So I've got this um, hoop frame leader. It's here at the top. You can see it has this rope. It's a thick rope that goes to the top. And I have connected this to the wall using high powered magnets. So screwed to my wall are some high powered magnets. And then I just use these L shaped brackets to hold that leader cloth in place. And it just supports it on that uh, tube, that little uh, rope at the top. And that holds it fairly straight across. I need to actually put a few more magnets on this wall so it's a little bit straighter and a little bit more secure, but this has worked so far for this size of quilt so far. So once I get that hanging on the wall, I then penned the leader cloth to my backing fabric. Make sure that your backing fabric is wrong side facing up or right side against the wall. Next, you're gonna layer on your batting and your quilt top. And depending on how good you get at this, I can now pretty much smooth out my batting and my quilt top at the same time. And I pen those at the same time. So one line of pens for that, one line of pens connecting the backing to the leaders. So this is the method that works really, really well for me. I smooth everything out so that the layers are nicely they're not basted, but they are aligned and they are nice and smooth. And this is the biggest downside to a hoop frame. Yes, you can quilt a big quilt on this frame. Uh, and yes, the frame has a small footprint, but you're still gonna have to get those layers together somewhere. And I found so far that doing this on the wall works really well. So the first step on the frame actually doesn't involve the quilt. It involves looking at your machine and anything that your machine could run into over here on the left side of the frame. So right now I'm just looking at, if I roll the machine forward and back, am I gonna bump up against anything on this left side? And this looks pretty good right here. I'm not really running into anything. And I'm gonna lock the machine so that now I can only roll horizontal. So I'm locking the channel lock on the bottom carriage. And then I roll that back and forth and make sure, yep, I can move it just fine. Now I'm gonna lock it on the other carriage, the uh, bottom top plate carriage for my home sewing machine. So now the machine is just locked in place, it's solid. Why did I do that? This location, being able to roll it forward and back, not hitting anything on the left side, this is the furthest left position of my needle. I can't roll it any further this way. And this is a very important point because I don't want the quilt to begin any further over this direction. I want it to be setting up so that that upper left-hand corner begins right here. So now I grab my quilt and that leader cloth and I shift it into position. So having the machine locked really makes this a much easier way to get started. Another thing you might wanna do is roll the machine, not all the way back, because we're gonna have our clamps in place, but maybe about a half of an inch from that back rail. And that way you know exactly where you want that corner of the quilt to go. I'm gonna drop my foot down. That's gonna kind of slightly squish the quilt. And I'm also gonna drop my needle down. That's gonna definitely lock the quilt into that position. So now at least I have my needle in it. <laughs> it's not going anywhere and it's not gonna slide off the frame. So now at this point I can grab the whole thing and fluff it up and over that front rail. And now we can start attaching our back clamps. So this is gonna go to the back. 
And you can see this is the main reason why we need a bigger arm in the, our home sewing machines. I can't even attach this with this uh, machine rolled all the way back like this. So I actually need a needle up and unclamp my channel lock and roll it a little further forward. That way I can get that clamp into position. And this is something that you're only gonna learn with practice, a little bit of trial and error and just experimenting just to see what's gonna work and if there's any nuances to your home sewing machine that you have to kind of accommodate, right? But you definitely want at least seven inches vertically. Sorry, actually no, that's, that's the harp space, that's the length. You want height-wise at least five and a half inches, I think, here vertically so that way you can accommodate these taller clamps. So there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. That looks good. And I just flip that fabric forward and into that little channel here at the top. Now let's clamp the center clamp. What I'm doing is I'm just smoothing out that leader cloth and then I just squeeze. And I actually had that one on backwards. You squeeze here and that opens up the bottom a little bit and that allows it to clamp to the back. So here we go, clamping in place, pulling that forward and then lifting up on that little tongue in order to bring that leader cloth in. Now, so far, the one thing I can see is that I'm not straight and we do wanna aim for being straight across. So I'm gonna shift this just a little bit until the edge of the clamp is right in line with the edge of those pins, just like my first clamp. And this is the thing that I find time consuming about loading uh, for hoop framing. And that is getting these clamps in place, getting the quilt straight. This can be a little bit of a struggle. So that looks just a little bit better. You can see the bottom of that clamp is running along the lines of those pens. And this is really just important in a quilt like I'm working on right now. And that is, it's got a lot of straight lines in it. And I roughly want those straight lines to run in line with the rails of the frame, if I can have it that way. So there we go. That is clamped across the back. Let me roll this leader cloth up. And I do like how much faster it is to just tuck that right in there and have that clamped so quick and easy by that back clamp. That's really a lot faster than those elastic straps. Uh, we have elastic straps on the cutie and the Q-zone frames, but this is just a little bit faster on our Evolution hoop frame. All right, that back is nicely secured. Now let's look at the front. So for this, we're going to make sure to smooth out and I just take my hands, I have one hand underneath and I'm just smoothing out, feeling that backing fabric, feeling for any wrinkles, making sure that those layers are nicely locked together. And then I'm gonna grab one of my front clamps. So I have these two front clamps and they go on just like that. Now we're aiming for kind of a bouncy tight. We don't want it super cranked down. Smoothing out that side, that feels good. Now I'll place the second clamp over here. And then this front rail does roll, so I can very gently lock that and just click it up one. And there we go, nice and bouncy tight. Now I can grab my clamps. Now you could go directly against it, but your home sewing machine may bump up against that. So if you want to, grab our side leaders. There are the little squares of fabric and you can pin this to the side of the backing fabric. And I usually just go through the backing and the batting with a few pins, probably like three or four will do it. Just like so. And then I use the clamps or the side clamp. So in this particular case, I can actually take that square go over that edge and I grab my side clamp here and lock that down. There we go. You can see how much that pulls nicely and gives us some nice side tension on the quilt. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So here you can see what that will look like once you get the side clamped in place. Now, what if the leader cloth will not reach? In that case, what you do is you just pin that in place, fold it over, and then grab 
your side clamps, your bungees here on the sides of the frame. They're always there, they're always installed and then clamp it and then tighten that down. The clamping mechanism is down at the side of the frame. So you can always use these side leaders. You can use some scrap fabric, whatever you've got on hand uh, in order to give some nice side tension to your quilt. Now with all of the clamps in place, a really good idea and a way to kind of check how straight everything is in the frame uh, and also to be able to see your quilting space is to base stitch a rectangle, the maximum space that you can quilt in this area. And that's what I'm doing right now. And what I'm finding is that the clamps can sometimes push my machine just a little bit further forward than I expect. And I probably should have loaded this quilt just a little bit further down, giving myself a little bit more of a buffer. So learn from that. You know, it's really easy to get it in there and just really want to be able to get into the meat of quilting immediately. But sometimes when we have these clamps, especially they can push our machine in unusual ways. We might not be able to quilt as much space as we think. So here I stitched all the way to this edge and now I'm just using that needle up, needle down button in order to drop the needle, bring it back up, and that's allowing me to make some nice big basting stitches. And so now I'm gonna roll over and it looks like I can quilt fairly straight line into these daisies. But you know, see, as I bounce up against that back uh, clamp, that's gonna change my quilting space. So this can be a little unexpected and it's one of the things I think it's a really good idea to do this base stitching and not only secures the layers of the quilt together, it allows you to see the area that you can quilt in. And you can see this is really, really big stitches. It's gonna be really easy to pull this out when you're done quilting. It's not gonna take up too much time to be able to get it back out of your quilt. Uh, and I do think that it adds a really good benefit. Just being able to see your quiltable area and get those layers nicely secured. So that's it for this video. We have our quilt loaded on the Evolution Hoop Hybrid Frame and it is ready for quilting. The base stitching is optional. You don't necessarily have to do it, but I really think it's a good idea, particularly if you're quilting on a home sewing machine. It can be a little unexpected how the clamps can change your quilting space, that area that you have open for quilting. And it's also good to be able to see where you can play, like where you can stitch without bumping into something. Uh, yes, I don't have very much space on this particular home sewing machine, but there are many creative things that we can do together. So I hope that you are looking forward to quilting this beautiful Daisy Loops baby quilt with me. We're gonna have lots and lots of fun stitching this together. If you'd like to find this particular fabric and follow along, check below the video for a link to Spoonflower where you can find it and print it on any fabric that you like. So if you'd like to learn more about this Evolution Hoop Hybrid Frame, come and check it out at leahday.com slash evolve. It will evolve with you. This particular frame right now measures 66 inches long. That's about five and a half feet long, but I could expand it if the crafty cottage was bigger and I could turn this into an eight foot, 10 foot or 12 foot rolling rail frame. This particular hybrid frame can also switch from hooping mode to rolling rail mode where this back rail rolls and it changes how this loading process works completely. So if the clamping method is not quite your thing and you're still kind of going, huh, not really sure about that, definitely check out my other video coming out soon showing you how to load this frame for rolling rail style quilting. So I hope that you'll check that out and you're looking forward to all of this cool information coming out about this awesome Evolution Hoop hybrid frame. Again, you can learn more about it at leahday.com evolve. Until next time, let's go quilt.